हेलो गाइस वंस अगेन वेलकम इन द पोइम द सी एंड द स्काई लार्क कंपोज बाय जी एम होपकिंस एज वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द वर्ड मीनिंग्स ऑफ दिस पोइम इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी विल एक्सप्लोर द हुल पोइम द सी एंड द स्काई लार्क सो गाइस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड गेट सम नॉलेज अबाउट द सोनेट Uh, this sonnet was written in 1877 in a seaside town a few miles from a saint bruno's college where hopkins lived for 3 years to complete his theological studies the theme of this poem uh, the theme of this sonnet is a contrast between the life giving purity of nature and the sordidness of the civilization that man is creating the town mentioned in the poem is rial in wales we heard the poem is not an attack particularly on that uh, town or the wales people it is a general meditation on nature and man occasioned by a particular scene so guys let us start the poem the very first stanza of this poem on ear and ear to noises to old to end trench right the tide that ramps against the shore with a flood or a fall low lull of or all roar frequenting there while moon shall wear and went too loud and forceful sounds are heard by the poet's two ears these sounds come from opposite directions as he stands by or walks along the seashore and both sounds are as old as the world of nature and will never end from the right hand comes the noise of tide regularly striking against the shore which is a kind of rampart against the onslaught of the waters with each waves the water floods the shore and then recedes with a corresponding each wave the water floods the shore and then recedes with a corresponding alternation in sound there is a brief pause after the breaking of the wave and the pause is followed by the all out roar of the next wave this alternating noise will continue to attend upon the seashore as long as the moon continues to wax and wane because the tides are controlled by the moon so guys uh, the next stanza of this poem left hand of land i hear the lark ascend his rest fresh revived new skin score in crips a curl of wild wind will and pour and pelt music till nuns to spill no span uh, guys in these lines from his left hand some distance away from the seashore comes the sound of the sky lark singing as the leaves the earth and flies up into the sky the sky lark song ever the same seems to follow a musical score which may be compared to a skein of wool that is successively unwound so that each song is as fresh as the one before this musical score the sky lark seems to wheel of the wind of his throat in a wild ecstasy not in a smooth or even flow but as it were 
encrypts curl of melody whose very sorry every note may be compared to a log of flick waving in the air the skylark pours out music without effort and yet he pelts his fresh song till he has spilt and spent all the there in nothing left so guys in the next stanza how these to shame this shallow and frail town how ring right out our so did turbin turbid time being pure we life's pride and care for crown in these lines uh, the poet uh, says that that uh, uh, these two natural sounds are putting to shame this town of rail we her life is shallow and devoid of vitality as contrasted with the sea and the skylark the sounds of nature because of their purity rise far above the sordid and confused human sounds of the town we human beings are supposed to be the pride of creation and the honored lords of the whole world but we have now lost the joy and charm of the earth when all things were in their prime the last lines of this poem have lost that cheer and charm of earth's past prime are make and making break are breaking down to man's last dust drain fast towards man's first slime in these lines now the static and dynamic aspects of our being are in process of decay and this integration this process will led us to the state of dust which awaits us in death and which recalls man's original state of slime our and will thus rejoin our pygmy that is we shall and as we begin we are witness no progress but retrogression so guys